It's dark. So if the sofrito is the sort of brains of the paella, which is like Helen, the stock is very much the dicking of the paella, the backbone, the flavour it has, the thing that actually really builds it and brings it all together. Um, it's you can buy a stock, a stock packet, you know, a wet stock, maybe a litre of that in some supermarkets, but I don't know, I haven't seen them in England. Don't get a stock cube, a fish stock cube, because it's a little bit too salty and it could really damage the flavour profile of the whole paella. So the, what we're going to do is we're going to blanch our mussels and clams and cook them off at this stage um, first. And then we're going to add our corn shells, our fish brains and everything afterwards. This way we get all the flavour of the mussels and clams into the paella without the, act edit, um, without the extra liquid. If I cook these clams and mussels in with the paella, water comes out of it and it affects very important liquid ratio to rice. I'm going to add a bit of sherry to mine. You can add a glass of white wine. We're going to burn off the alcohol, which we all know is important. And you can always add a little bit more. Can you just recap what you've got again? Clams, 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 clams. Mussels, mussels. Prawn shells, fish frames, frames, frames. <laughs> and how much of each? 500 grams. So I've got 500 grams of each, which we're going to then keep the meat, uh, the, the meat of the prawns, meat of the clams and mussels, and put on the paella at the end. Okay, that's cooked off. I'm going to add one litre of the finest I've eaten tap water. Going to bring that to boil before we add our mollusks. I'm using sherry in my stock, but you can use white wine. Probably best to use a Catalan wine, it feels a bit more authentic because it's closer to Valencia. But I have sherry because that's all I had in my cupboard. It doesn't have in the pan with the sherry and water, which is now boiling with a lid. The lid is important. We're going to start marking off our mollusks. Don't overfill it, because if you overfill it, they won't cook too well. We want them to open up, not cook too much. We'll get them straight into a colander, and when they're cold enough to handle, we'll take the lovely flesh out. So that's been about 20 seconds, because there's not too much in. You can see when they're open, we know they're good. If they don't open, we're going to actually reserve them and we'll just boil them, we'll cook them along with the rest of the um, fish bones. It shouldn't make us ill. I mean, that could be terrible advice. I'm not a doctor. Um, lid back on. And I like to take them out when they're ready. I don't just expect them all to happen at the same time. Clams and mussels are unique like us. They all, they all die at a different time. Okay, we're going to put the other half in, lid back on. As you can see, I've got a colander and a bowl to collect all the juice. All the liquid, all the juice is really important. We want to keep as much flavour or collect as much flavour from different pieces and places. So that's our second batch out. They take, when you only put 250 grams in a big boiling pan, they take about half a minute, if that. But, you know, take them out on a case by case basis as I said. That was a bit shriveled, but yeah, it's looking good. Mine are from Glyphia. Where are yours from? <laughs> okay, we're going to do the clams. Um, if you can't get clams and you can't get mussels, get more prawns and then do get a lot more prawns and, you know, if they're frozen it's fine, then we we'll do a you could do a very prawny stock with lots of prawn shell, which is just as good. So you can but, use frozen? Definitely you, you can use frozen prawns. Almost all prawns will be arriving frozen. I put all the clams in that time because they're a bit smaller. But the same weight. Um, you can make a more prawny stock. If there are any questions, you can always email me on rebeccadossatero at gmail.com. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, I will answer all those questions. Uh, these again won't take too long. You can hear them clackering away. That's them knitting. 
inside each clan is the tiniest missing person. Oh, that one's ready. Oh, they look good. The benefits of being able to use prawns and uh, mussels and clams is they, they add very much different notes within the stock. Like you'll get a more metallic, rounder, buttery note when you've got the mussels. The clams can add a almost sweeter note. The prawns a perfume sweet note. And then you've got this sort of metallic -y fishiness from the bones. Yep, these are doing quickly. to be done. Okay, great. Well, that's our prawns done. And as I said, when we're making the sofrito, to keep... Sorry. As I said, when we were making the sofrito, is to keep back all your, all your trimmings, the tomato trimmings, the garlic bits, and the um, onions. That liquid was front of the gilt, don't you worry about it. Um, so we've got the tomato bits, onions in there. I'm going to slip in the rest of my bones, my prawns. I've got gurnard. I've got a baby sea bream. I've got some weird old fish I don't know. These Breca. are called stockfish. A Rebecca fish. <laughs> Breca from Ibiza. Breca. Breca. From Breca. Um, we're going to bring this up to a gentle simmer. We don't ever want the stock to boil with fish uh, because some people say that it makes it taste bitter. I think I agree. Um, so I that might just... add a few fronds of saffron. It's not totally necessary, but I seem to do it all the time. I don't know why, I just like the stock to be slightly blushed. It's more of a preference than a necessity. A lot of the best paella people disagree with that and they only ever put it in the sofrito. And that's why we've had it in the sofrito. We'll add a few fronds of saffron. It's quite a little bit more affordable to have from here than it is in England. So I am a bit more generous with it than I probably would be at home. Ah, this is my home. You can see it's already turning a nice blush colour. I think it, it just makes the stock's existence happier for me. Hey, look at him. Does it give it a flavour? Yes, yes, it gives the saffron flavour. And also the colour here will add a bit more to the rice. Um, I'm going to just very quickly show you what we're going to do with these now they're cool enough. We are going to reserve 10 of the clams and mussels, or 20. No, 10 to 15 of the clams and mussels in a half shell, which we will use as the decoration. And then the rest, we're just going to pop out like this, and we'll keep them in a fridge until we need to use them a bit later. If, like me, you might have forgotten about your stock and got ready for bed and remember just as you're in bed that your stock still needs straining, get yourself a sieve, a jug, or any other sort of container, and just... Pour your stock through. We don't want any bones or debris into our paella. If you get yourself a little spoon. Every last bit of... Tits. Okay. And then Keep it cool until you need it. Fish stock does go off quite rapidly, it's volatile. That's really good. 
Digamos. 